Hi, this is Kyle Plass from Shadowcast Productions, and thanks for coming to watch my movie review of The Evil Dead. So, we're introduced to the characters of Shelly, Scotty, Ash, Linda, and Cheryl. They're a bunch of college kids looking for a private getaway so they can, well, you know. I guess their idea of a vacation means a crappy, run-down old cabin in the middle of the Tennessee woods, but, you know, that's just part of the fun. When they arrive to the cabin, they settle down, share a meal, and then the cellar door opens up, and now, here comes the fun. When Ash and Scotty venture down inside of the cellar, they find some really creepy stuff. You know, a tape recorder, a dagger, and a book with somebody's face sewn on the front. Jeez! Like, why would you touch that? Well, this is a horror movie, so everybody, I guess. Anyway, they take it back upstairs and play the tape recorder, and on it, some archaeologist reads an incantation from the book. Tatra amistrobin hazarta. Tantir mano manzizon hazan sobar. Samanda rosa. Tantis haiker tante rosa. When the passage is through, some demons wake up. Yep, demons. Before I mention anything else about the demons in this movie, let me talk about the camera work. It's freaking great. There's this demonic entity called the Force that we never get to see. It's the coolest thing ever. Basically, all that the director Sam Raimi did was mount the camera onto a 2x4 and run as fast as he could. One of my favorite shots in the movie is when the Force flies through the cabin and then it slams into actor Bruce Campbell and sends him flying like miles out through the woods. It's great. Anyway, back to the film. The character Cheryl, like all horror movie cliches, goes wandering off into the woods. When she's out there, she gets attacked by a tree in a very, uh, mature way. So if you're gonna watch this movie, this is the only real warning I have about it, uh, this scene. And all of the over-the-top gore, of course. Which is great. After that, she gets possessed and mayhem ensues. People get punched, thrown, stabbed in the Achilles tendon with a number two pencil. I mean, honestly, if you're watching this movie and you're thinking, there can't be any more blood, you're wrong. This movie is balls to the wall. There's a scene where the character Scotty chops up his own girlfriend with an axe. And, on top of that, look what he has the freaking guts to say to Bruce Campbell's character. Listen to me. Linda cannot walk with her leg like that. She can't even stand up. Well, then we'll leave her here. That's I'm not sure we can fair. Send somebody back. What, are you crazy? It's gonna look, I'm getting out. Hey. I don't care what happens to her. She's your girlfriend, you take care of her. Oh, you traitor. Look, this movie has very few, if any, redeemable characters. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example, I'll just rattle them off. Cheryl, she's mostly self-centered and seems quite mean and pessimistic if you ask me. Scotty, he's a traitor and he leaves his own friends behind to die. And Ash, well let's face it, Ash is an idiot and he's much too reliant on other people, until he's forced to fend for himself, that is. Linda is sweet and caring until she's possessed, and we don't really get to see too much of Shelly, really. Somehow, you still care about what happens to all these characters, though. That's what I've always really found strange with this movie. Even though they're all pretty bad actors, there's something in each of these characters that seems really personal. I really like that about this movie. And that's mainly why I think it's so great. It really is the gem in the 80s horror movie crown. And it'll always be my personal favorite horror movie. Check it out. I give it 10 out of 10 stars. See you next time. This is Kyle Platts, signing off.